Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when uh, at the, after the last election, the Prime Minister was at pains to uh, say to his caucus that they had to not be arrogant. That's right. Well, there's one minister where that memo was obviously missed, and that's the Minister for Corrections. The minister that epitomises being arrogant and out of touch. In fact, she sits so far up on her high horse that the saddle horn gives her a pained expression. We see it every time Stuart Nash asks her a question in question time. In uh, May of 2009, she said, National demanded accountability from Labour ministers over what she perceived were failures by corrections. But Ms. Ms. Collins said she would not be taking the blame for any botch-ups. Right. Immediately, at least. Well, it's time now that she started to take the blame for her many botch-ups. Right. Let's have a let's explore her track record. Mm. Judith Collins was the architect of pro, uh, prison privatisation. I remember in 2009 walking down the main street of Kaikohe with uh, corrections officers from Ngāwha Prison saying that. If prisons are privatised, we'll see low pay, uh, low pay, we'll see poor conditions, there'll be staff cuts, there'll be contra contraband brought into prisons, corners will be cut, we'll see increased violence and assaults. Every single prediction that those corrections officers made in 2009 came to pass. Wow. What did we see? First of all, oh, in May, uh, June of last year at Select uh, Committee, when the then Minister Sam Lotoenga was uh, before us, I raised the issue about uh, fight, uh, fighting and assaults going on. He said to me, oh no, it doesn't happen. Circo is the uh, best performing uh, prison, and that uh, what I'm hearing are just hearsay, is, is just hearsay. Well, within months, we saw the videos uh, coming out of Mount Eden Correction Facility. We saw the fight clubs. We heard also that guards were training. The minister stood up here in the house, and in response to a question, he said that the guards were training. He, they, he was, they, they were teaching them, giving them sparring tips. It's the guards were actually uh, not only helping them with training, helping the prisoners with training, they were also betting on the outcomes of the fight clubs. A drug syndicate was being run out of Mount Eden Correctional Facility. Family members were being extorted by prisoners on the inside. Uh, people would be sitting at home at night enjoying TV or whatever. The phone would ring and it would be an inmate, a prisoner from uh, the prison, and you'd say, here is a bank account that I want you to stick uh, money into or else your son or your daughter will be assaulted. Guards have been caught smuggling contraband into uh, into uh, Circo. Uh, in fact, Woody, we raised the, um, the, the issue that tobacco was being brought into Woody not long ago, and uh, I believe that there wasn't much of a, a, uh, an investigation conducted. All the guards were told was that uh, if it's you, stop it, because if you're caught, you'll get the sack. As recently as last night, I received a, received a phone call from uh, the family members of, a, uh, of prisoners saying that five cell phones in the last five days have been found in Woody Prison. Circo these days in Mount Eden is nothing more than a glorified labour hire company. They just provide the labour while Corrections is running, it, uh, running the prison. Yesterday, Judith Collins uh, said that uh, what we're doing now is planning for the future. Yeah. Now, when they, when they said that we're going to build a billion dollar prison to house 1,800 prisoners, what we're doing now is planning for the future. That's the problem. They're planning for yesterday, today. And that's where they have made a big mistake. The, uh, the prison muster in August of 2014 was 8,742 prisoners, which was 379 above the, uh, the government's forecasts. In October of 2015, the muster was 9,134. There was 501 above the government's forecasts. As uh, recently as last week, the muster is now 9,936, 499 above the government's forecasts. Their way out, by the time those prisons are built in uh, two years' time, they'll need another to build another prison. One of the reasons why we need to build so many prisons is because rehabilitation programs in prisons simply do not work. In their own annual report, they say that um, the, uh, pr the programs have results that are less than statistically significant. In other words, they don't work, and we're just filling up prison prisons with more and more prisoners 
and we're not getting value for our taxpayers' dollar. Oh, good speech. Good speech.